Hey guys, it's Mike here, your friendly neighborhood garage door guy. I've been doing garage doors for about 10 years now. Um, I wanted to make a series because I have so many people call in and ask questions about this, as well as I'm also reviewing Home Depot Springs right now. First video in the series, I'm going to go over how to measure them, how to plan on what kind of spring you need, uh, questions you should ask yourself as far as considering springs, etc. The second video is where I'll go through step-by-step step how to install it, uh, things to be aware of, you know, safety parameters, etc. I do strongly recommend you watch both videos thoroughly before trying to do a spring change yourself. Full disclaimer, I would always recommend a trained professional do this. It isn't rocket science, but injuries are very common. I will do my best to educate you on how to select the best springs for your needs, how to uninstall, install the new ones, and make sure the door is properly calibrated. You should be able to get springs from your local uh, vendors. You can do it will call and install it yourself. But the thing about it is a lot of vendors won't sell for liability reasons. Some will, but they usually have their markup. You know, Home Depot is probably a little bit cheaper, but at the same time, they're not readily available right now. You usually have to wait a few days uh, and or, you know, depends on what stock they have, etc. Like local vendors almost always have thousands of each of these sizes on hand because they're always doing it. That's part of their business. So with Home Depot quality wise, I mean, these are Home Depot springs. They're perfectly fine springs. There's nothing wrong with them. I mean, I'm suspecting they come from either the same factory or an identical factory. My biggest issue with this uh, from Home Depot is their shipping. So these cones, this is called a cone here. This is your center uh, plate cone. This is your set screw cone. This is the one that you actually wind up and you have the set screws in there. These are very hard yet brittle metal. It's almost kind of like a cast iron or something, but not quite. And in my experience, we see all the times where these things are cracked, these things chip off. They do not bend at all. They either chip or crack or they are perfectly fine. It's one or the other, no in between. So my issue with Home Depot shipping, you can see, I mean, literally these were just in a box, no foam around it, no packaging, just a box. So you can see how it's kind of worn through here and at the bottom here, you can see how this one is completely busted open on both sides. Um, I actually had one set from Home Depot where this was cracked here. I mean, you got to consider this is a lot of tension held at this point. You don't want to see cracks anywhere at all. So I hope that they learn because what I would like them to do is, I mean, imagine this is inside the box. So the box is coming like right here type thing. They don't need foam around this at all. I mean, this part is solid. It's, you can drop these from 20 feet up. This will be fine. This thing, if you drop it from three feet up, I mean, it's fine to drop it, but if you ever drop it at an angle and it hits those, that's where it's very prone to breaking it. So I hope that they wise up and literally what I would recommend them to do is put just a, a one by four little board in the end of it and on both ends. So up there and then right here at the top as well. Um, that would not only create a little bit of structure, you know, imagine it just being like right here type thing is where your board is um but it would also add if it ever is dropped on the corner or something like that it's not going to be as prone to, to damaging it right so i really hope home depot's manufacturer wisens up on that because i mean i've had probably i'd say seven to ten sets and i mean probably half of them have had cracks in them one thing I almost forgot to mention is that when you're buying a Home Depot spring versus a actually retailer springs that will call, um, when you're buying Home Depot springs, they do by default come with winding bars. You will need this for the second part of the series, which is actually uninstalling the old springs and installing the new ones, as well as if you're measuring the springs and you want to actually unwind them before measuring, you'll need that. Uh, but otherwise for measuring, you generally don't need these yet. But what these are for is you basically use these to put these in and then you turn it and that's how you add tension. You basically go one by one, etc. You just keep twisting it. That's how you add torque to it. It is very, very, very important that you do not use something that you think will make do. Don't use a screwdriver or something. It is not rated for that. These will have a lot of torque on them. One of the most common injuries that we see and hear of is actually people using screwdrivers or something that they think will work. And as they're turning, and especially as they get higher up on the turns and they get more torque on it, 
that thing snaps and then it basically flings around and shoots that piece at them. We've seen broken collarbones, people have lost eyeballs. I mean, there's it, it can be very serious. So you need bars. Again, Home Depot will come with them. If you don't get them from Home Depot, if you get them locally from a will call place, some companies like the company I currently work for, it's very strange because they will sell you springs, but they won't sell you wiring bars under uh, for liability reasons. I don't know how that makes sense. It's like, hey, we'll sell you the dangerous product, but we won't sell you the tools to make it safer. <laughs> um, but I mean, for example, you can see these are mine. I've had these ones, I think, for about two or three years now. Uh, you can see they get pretty beat up. Um, you can see these are longer. So I mean that I can get more tor uh, torque and leverage out of these. Doesn't mean these won't work. It just means you have to put more effort into it. I will say though, if you're going to like a wire that's a, a 250 or something or higher, I mean, it's it's gonna be pretty exhausting doing this, especially the higher wire diameter you get and the higher, especially IPPT, which I'll explain later, the more you'll want leverage because otherwise it's gonna be very hard. Um, so just keep that in mind if you're not getting it from Home Depot, you gotta get these somewhere. If you can't get it from your local distribution center, you can actually get these from Home Depot itself, essentially in the form of just one solid uh, cold rolled steel uh, bar. Um, and then you can always basically grind it in half, kind of bell the edge a little bit, and that will work. Make sure that you get cold rolled steel, not hot rolled steel. The reason being is if this thing, if this thing was ever not strong enough when you're turning it, it will start to bend. So you'll have a warning like, okay, don't go anymore. You know, it's going to break. Otherwise, if you have hot rolled steel, those do not bend, they just snap. So you do not have any warning, it just suddenly happens. So make sure you're using cold rolled steel. So when it comes to measuring your springs, sometimes you will get springs that actually have writing on them. You gotta keep in mind when these things are fully wound, I mean, it's gonna be like a, like a swirly line all the way around it, so you won't be able to read it. You can see the spring is currently fully wound, so you cannot read the writing on it. Once the door is all the way up, the spring isn't quite as wound, so you should be able to read it if it's done correctly. Otherwise, if you're not gonna get it off of this measurement here, you're gonna need these tools to measure it. At the very least, you're gonna need a measuring tape and like a flathead screwdriver or something to basically just, you know, keep track of the uh, coils you're counting. Uh, I would highly recommend getting a spring gauge. I know in the circumstance of your garage door is broken, you want it done as soon as possible. Getting a spring gauge either A means that getting locally or B means ordering online, which obviously you have to wait a few days before you can even order these and then you have to wait a few days more. But this will give you a precise measurement. Um, I mean, you can see the space differences between these. Keep in mind, we count 20 spring or 20 coils out, and this is the minute differences between them. Uh, keep in mind the measurement of a spring. This is a 218 wire. That means it's 218 one thousandths of an inch. So 250 wire, for example, is basically one quarter inch. Uh, 50 wire is a half inch, etc. So, I mean, you can literally have something that's like, I mean, the 207 and 218, that is 10 one thousandths of an inch difference in coil diameter. So, you, I mean, by the naked eye, you probably wouldn't be able to tell the difference. Um, it's usually like every three wire sizes that you'll kind of visibly see the difference. But with that said, first I'm going to go over how to measure it with this. Um, if your springs are broken, usually you have a gap in between, something like that. You can basically put it right on there, but I'm going to basically do it on this one for two reasons. One of which is even if you do measure it on this end, you do need to measure both springs. They're not always identical, so don't ever assume that they are. Um, and two, let's just say for some reason you're replacing them preemptively or that your springs seem wrong or whatever. All you do is, I mean, you literally, it's easier if you don't have tension on it, but you basically just, you know, get the wire a little bit loose and it's designed to pop right in there. So with that said... I'm going to count 20 coils. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20. And you can see that that coil right here, that's where I stopped. And that is right where that 218 wire is. 
do not have a spring gauge, you can measure it with a measuring tape and a you know calculator. But the thing is, this is a very rough estimate. It's not as tried and true as that. So for example, what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna do the exact same thing with my measuring tape. I'm gonna measure 20 coils. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20. So looking at this, we're at about four and five sixteenths, maybe four and three eighths, like right between there. What we're gonna do is we're gonna take that measurement and then we're gonna divide it by 20 because it was 20 coils. So the next measurement you're gonna need is the actual inner diameter. That is the distance from here to here on the inside. Note that is not the outer diameter. So we are literally one and three quarter inch. And note that most spring sizes for residential garage doors will be one and three quarter or two inch inner diameter. That's the most common sizes. You do occasionally do with something like a two and five eight or three inch, but that's usually on a much bigger door. Um, I always recommend, if, especially if you do have one and three quarter inch to go to two inch inner diameter, it doesn't seem like much of a difference, but these are much higher cycles. Now, with that said, what are cycles? So just like car parts are rated on average lifespans as far as miles go. So for example, your car tires are rated for, let's say 50, or sorry, probably 40,000 to 80,000 miles, depending on what brand and everything. Uh, springs are no different. A cycle is your door going up and down once. Average spring, especially the ones that come with it from the factory are usually rated for about 10,000 cycles. The average user will do about a thousand cycles a year. So 10,000 cycles on average is about 10 years. There's a lot of variables still in that. What kind of maintenance you do? Uh, you know, is there any moisture in the air? Is it somewhere humid like a marina or something, etc.? cetera? Uh, but typically around 10 years for 10,000 cycles. So one thing to strongly, that, that I would strongly advise to consider is upcycling. What I mean by this is you can take a spring like this and you can get a spring that it only looks like maybe one and a half times bigger and it's still the same amount of strength so it still opens your door the same but because it's dispersed over a bigger workload it lasts significantly longer so for example these springs i replaced my, on my garage door um you can see here i mean that's about a 30 inch length you can see the springs i have on there those are each 40 inch and they're both uh two inch inner diameter and those springs are the exact same strength, technically, I'll get into that later, um, but they are actually rated to last 10 times longer than these. To give you guys an idea of what we are talking about, these springs, if you get them on Home Depot, I think they're, God, what are they, probably 60 or 70 bucks. Those springs on Home Depot are 80 bucks. So 10 or $20 different, and those are rated for 10 times longer. Now, again, this is an average. I mean, if I don't do any maintenance in their lifespan, that's going to significantly hurt their lifespan. If there's a lot of metal shavings getting up there, uh, concrete part, particulate getting up there, uh, even sawdust, I mean, kind of affects them a little bit. Anything that's getting in between those coils and wearing it out more, that affects it, uh, etc. But on average, whatever normal wear and tear I had on these, if I have the same normal wear and tear on those for the lifespan of those, 10 times longer. So the other reason I recommend that is not only are they not much more, you got to think about it. Every time your spring breaks, that is a high chance of something going wrong. I've seen plenty of times where that spring breaks and somebody doesn't understand it's broken and they go to run their motor. Your motor has safety parameters in it that it's supposed to sense it and it's supposed to stop. But in my experience, those are never, well, I shouldn't say never. They're very rarely ever tuned the way they need to be, especially a lot of, uh, you know, contract builders, uh, you know, they hire the guy that's very cheap and he just cranks that thing to 11 and he doesn't fine tune it. So because of that, we see plenty of times where that top panel, when the motor is pulling on it, the door won't move, but the motor's pulling like crazy. So it just like pulls that top panel in half. I've seen our times where people keep running it and the motor is strong enough to run it, but you instantly wear the gear kit inside the motor out, which is another 200 bucks. Um, I've even seen times where it's part way open and a kid or a cat or a dog or whatever runs through those all the time. And we see where it's partway open and a spring snaps and that thing comes crashing down like a guillotine. 
I mean, it's just a high risk. You, you don't want to have this happen more often than is absolutely necessary. Um, so that's why I always recommend to spend just a little bit more, get springs that are correct for you. So if you are wanting to convert your springs, anything that is not just popping is exactly what you have and getting the exact same thing. Whether you're wanting to upcycle, maybe your springs seem a little bit weak, so you want something a little bit stronger. Maybe they seem too strong, so you want something a little bit weaker. Um, and or they're mismatched and you want them to be identical. And especially if you do want them to upcycle, I'm going to show you now how to go through that step by step. So with that said, you're going to go into your app store. You're going to type in SSC Spring Engineering, see so at the top there. It's going to be the second one, this red one right here. You're going to download that. It is 100% free. There's occasionally an add on it, but you click skip, you know, and it's free. So uh, hit open. So see, that was an ad right there. What you're going to do is you're going to go to Spring Conversion. That's the top left. Now, this is where you enter everything in. So let's say you have one spring. You would pick your inner diameter right here. Again, typically for residential, it's only going to be two inch or inch and three quarter. It might be bigger if you have a really heavy door, but it's this will be nine out of 10 doors, maybe 99 out of 100 doors. Um, here, you pick your spring size. If you're ever unsure of what your spring size is, maybe you measured it with your measuring tape and it doesn't quite seem right, this tells you all the generic uh, spring sizes. So let's say when you did the math, when I told you how to measure it with the spring, let's say you came to like 216 or something, right? So you can tell that the spring sizes in that range are 207, 218, 225. So it basically rounds to the nearest one, which is 218. That means you're close, but you were two one thousandths of an inch off. So it, again, it's, it's that specific. Um, and trust me, it does matter. Again, my personal garage door had two one eights. They added struts to it, which added weight. So they needed the next size up the spring. They never did that. So it was a very heavy running door. So I uh, calculated it to the same length, but it was a 225, which increased the IPPT by, I think, about four or five or something like that. Uh, and to be clear, PP IPPT means pound per turn. It's how it's engineered, like how much it lifts. That right there took it from a door that probably took 20 to 30 pounds to run it by hand to a door that literally takes like five pounds to run by hand. It freaking glides with your pinky. It's so easy. So let's walk through a, different, a couple different scenarios. First, let's say your, your springs are the exact same size. So you're gonna cl uh, click two if there is two springs, right? Or if there's three springs, which I've never really seen, it's usually one, two, or four. But again, two is the most common for a double wide door. Uh, let's say it's 218 like mine was, let's see. So click 218. We're gonna type in the spring length. I think mine was a 31, if I remember correctly. So here you can see it just generated information. The IPPT, that is how much uh, strength it's rated for. The cycles, keep in mind this app is not perfect on cycles. Um, you know, it's always assuming that your gener generic springs are rated for 10,000 cycles. Again, if you have a cloquet door, they usually give you like 7,000 cycle springs, something like that. So they're kind of cheap like that. So it doesn't necessarily mean, like, even if you calculated those springs, it by default will say 10,000 cycles. So kind of take that with a grain of sand, sorry. Um, but at the same time, when you calculate upcycled springs, it'll tell you 20,000, 30,000, 60,000, etc. So even though that number is also probably wrong because it's based on what this original uh, spring is, you can kind of gauge, like, okay, 10,000 versus 60,000, that means that one will last six times longer. If it's 100,000, that means it'll last 10 times longer, et cetera, right? So when you have that in there, you can go to your replacement at the bottom. By, by default, it always says that there's only one. So again, hit two of them, and it will calculate. So you can see the exact same thing is matching. Now, if you hit this plus and minus, this will actually take you through what is a basically a higher cycle spring but again, if you watch that IPVT, it stays the same. It's the same amount of lifting force. It's just a bigger spring, which means it'll last longer. You notice how as I'm hitting up, the cycles are also going up substantially. Now, obviously, at a certain point, you're going to get to a spring that's way too big for your door. Uh, for example, this spring currently says it's 59 inches. I don't know if you can 
can't really highlight it, but on spring length it says 59 inches. That is a very long spring. If you go any longer, your spring will be so long again. Keep in mind, it's only connected at the ends, nor in, nor in between. So what's going to happen is your coils are actually going to sag in the middle, which that shaft going through, they're going to be sagging against the shaft. So as they're twisting, it's going to be grinding. That'll make a screeching sound. You don't want that for two reasons. One, that is very noisy. And two, that is wear and tear on your spring. So at a certain point, you don't want to go too long. You can always ups, uh, upsize the inner diameter. So again, if we go to spring ID, again on the replacement setup part, you can go to, let's say two and five eighths, because that's usually the next size. Those other sizes are very rare. Um, so now, if we upcycle the springs, at 57,000 cycles, we're rated at 46 and a half inches. That's much more doable. You usually don't want a very long spring. But at the same time, you got to keep in mind your width of the spring. You know, if you're two inches versus two and five eighths, you're about that much bigger. At a certain point, you got to keep in mind that door, when it comes up, has to turn and tilt back. So if you had a spring on there that's like eight inches wide, there's a very high chance that that spring is so big that your door would literally hit it on the way coming up before it ever has a chance to get uh, tilt back. It would just be in the way. It's so big. General rule of thumb, your drums on there, on the very ends of the door, they're uh, five inch wide, I believe. So generally you don't want a spring that is wider than those. Uh, but at the same time, I mean, if you're dealing with a five inch wide spring, you're dealing with something that is super, super high cycles. I mean, you're talking, let's do four and seven eighths and go a couple more inches. Let's say it's a 40 inch. You're talking 179,000 cycles. That is almost 18 times as much lifespan. You don't need that, but you do want something that is probably at least triple, if not more. Again, think about it. If you replaced it in 10 years, triple means probably 30 years. Quadruple probably means 40, etc. Now, going back to the drawing board, let's say that you have mismatched sizes. Again, for clothes paper doors, it's very common. So what you're going to do, you're going to hit one size on your spring. You're going to, and ignore the replacement setup for a second. Uh, so on here at the very top right, mismatch, you're going to hit yes. So on here, you enter the specs of one spring. So you say 218 by, let's say it's a, I don't know, 27 or something. Now on the next one, this is your next set or your next spring on there. So let's say that this one is a two, what does the club they usually do? It's usually like a 192 by like a 17 or something like it's like usually a tiny spring um, so you'll see that the IPPT between that top and bottom one is significantly different uh, the cycles again they are generically assuming that they're rated for 10,000 cycles but I can tell you for a fact that both paint does this whether they have one decent sized spring and one tiny spring that tiny spring is probably rated for like 6,000 cycles maybe seven uh, but again on to the fact when you go to your replacement setup and you do your two springs uh, we've got to change this back to a two inch inner diameter. So when you do your two springs, again, it's going to calculate it 23.71 IPPT. So that is the balance between this 25.6 and 21.83. So it auto calculates what is the average between the two, um, which essentially how you do it is these two spring IPPTs, it is an average you're looking for because what they do is the lowest and the highest they add those together and they divide it by two, that gives you the average. So it doesn't even matter if they're like super low and super high, it's still the average strength that you're doing, right? Now, last scenario I wanna go with, we're gonna turn mismatch off. Um, we're gonna go back to two springs on there. Let's say that your spring is, again, it just seems like it has always been super heavy, it needs to be stronger, right? So let's say that you have a 218 by let's say it's 31 for example whatever the IPPT is so this one's 22.18 if you want a stronger spring if your spring has been working this far I would recommend don't go more than three IPPT more so for example you would want an IPPT that's a uh, say like 25 25.18 max if you want a spring that is weaker again the alternative your door seems like it's too strong like it needs a weaker spring again don't go lower than three IPPT because um, even 3 IPT, that's pretty substantial. I mean, on this, that's like literally almost 10% different or something like that. 
Sorry, I'm bad with math. Uh, but that is quite a significant amount of difference. So the way we're going to calculate something different is you're going to play with the spring length. So get a stronger spring, you're going to make it a shorter spring. That means it's stronger. A longer spring will be weaker. So let's try a 30. Again, keeping in mind our IPT is 22.18 right now. So when we do 30, now we're at 22.94. Let's try a 29. Now we're at 23.77. Let's try a 28. Now we're at 24.65, etc. Again, let's say, again, let's go back to the drawing board. Let's go back to 31. If you want a stronger spring, you, or sorry, a weaker spring, you up the size. Let's go 32. 21.46. Let's go 33. 20.79. Let's go 34, etc. Once you have determined what spring you want, again, the replacement will auto-calculate what spring works. So again, this 34-inch wire is going to be the exact same thing. Even if they're mismatched, if you want, if you have two mismatched springs, essentially you would want to increase, ideally only one of them, 3IPPT, maybe both of them, 3IPPT, because you're still looking at the average between the two. <coughs> so six average divided by two is three. So again, that would work. Um, but again, once you have that, once you have calculated exactly what you have and kind of like what you're looking for, this will give you all the sizes and what they equal. And you can upcycle them from there. You can downcycle them from there. You can change the inner diameter to whatever you want. Uh, you know, you can change if you want to do a different coil. Although typically you just go wire size and it'll just tell you what you want. You really don't type that in manually, etc. So an experienced technician will use this or uh, the older generation of technicians, you know, we're, us newer guys were kind of spoiled. Uh, they will literally have a booklet of this stuff and it will tell them every single size and then what the IPPT is. So if they're looking for, they have a currently a 50 IPPT and they're trying to get it to like a 55 or something, then they will go through there, figure out their IPPT is 50, and then they'll look through other sizes and see which other ones have a 55 IPPT, and they'll kind of decide, like, okay, that one's too long, that one's too wide, you know, this one's just right type thing. Like, whereas, again, this takes all the guesswork out of it and just does it for you. So, again, we're kind of spoiled. Same with, like, GPS and Google Maps. You know, back then, they had to know their street names pretty well and use maps pretty well. We are luckily very blessed. <laughs> um, so, again, name of the game, I do strongly suggest to consider upcycling. A pretty good bit, at least three times as much, if not more. Uh, Price-wise, you're increasing your price 10% or less. To be safe, I would say 5 to 20%, depending on how upcycled you go. And again, keep in mind, your amount of effort and labor in this is the exact same thing. The only thing you're doing is you're spending a little bit more money so that you don't have to do as much effort and labor as often in the future. And that also means less liability, less often that things happen, right? So that's why I always stress it. That's why I'm always trying to push my customers on it. They think I'm upselling them or something. The reality is, like, you don't understand. Your door could look terrible. If I've had plenty of doors that are total when their springs are broken, so you really don't want to deal with it. Don't have to deal. All right. Thanks for watching, guys. Um, I hope you found this video helpful. Again, tune in to part two on how to actually install them as safe as possible, as efficient as possible, and in a way that is going to make your door run as smoothly as possible so you're not having to deal with not only this issue as often, but other issues that could be caused if springs are improperly installed. All right, we'll see you in the next one.